My name is Peter Sullivan. I am writing this in case I go missing. So, people will know what happened. It all started the day Lee Sutton and his wife returned from their trip. They were going on a very important company business trip while their daughter stayed at a friend's house. Whatever happened to them while they were gone, they weren't the same when they came back. In fact, I barely even recognized them when they got out of their car that morning. They seemed disheveled and had almost inhumanly wide grins on their faces. When I greeted them, they just waved and went into their house. At around noon, they left to go get their daughter and bring her back to their house. They were less disheveled, but still had those creepy grins. I was on my porch drinking some lemonade when they came back. I overheard them asking their daughter how her week with her friend was. Their voices were normal, but the way they were speaking was off. Hollow, almost. No real emotion was audible in their voices. They still had those smiles on their faces. She seemed uncomfortable, but still eager to tell her parents all about her week as they walked into their house. I finished my lemonade and walked into my house as well. The rest of the day was pretty average. Until that night. At that point, around eight, loud, blood-curdling screams erupted from the Sutton house. I knocked on their door and was met by Lee and his creepy smile. I asked if everything was all right, and he responded with, everything was quite all right. He said that his daughter was watching a horror movie, and they were trying to get her to quiet down, apologizing for the noise. I had doubts, since she was still screaming, but accepted the reason as there wasn't much I could do. The next morning I was on my porch, drinking coffee, as I usually was, when the Sutton daughter came up to me and apologized for the screaming the night before. I felt uneasy as she was wearing a large smile similar to her parents and was speaking with the same hollow tone, but I accepted the apology all the same. That night, there was yelling again, but not from the Sutton household. This time, it was the house of Gary Carlin, the local mailman. I was getting more and more uneasy, but decided to ignore it, as Gary was always yelling at his cat, Phoebe. The next day, I was on the porch, waiting for Gary to deliver the mail so I could ask him what had happened the night before, and if he was okay. But he didn't arrive at the normal time. However, an hour later, I walked onto the porch to enjoy the day as normal when I saw Gary walking away from the house. I called a greeting to him, and he turned around to greet me back. On his face was a damned smile, just like the Sutton family had. I was shocked. Why the hell was everyone smiling like that? I wondered to myself. Is it some kind of trend that I haven't heard of? Well, I looked it up and couldn't find anything about it, so I made a vow to myself to find out what was going on. Luckily, the rest of the day went on without a hitch. However, that night, I was on my porch smoking a cigarette when I saw the Sutton family leave their house. At first, I thought they were going on a trip or something, but they never even went near their driveway. Instead, they started walking down the street. I decided to sneakily follow them, and I was soon led to the house of Henry McMillan and his family. I watched as they slowly and quietly opened the door and snuck in. I know I should have called the cops, but I decided I was going to solve this mystery myself. I waited three minutes and snuck in. I watched as the Sutton family injected the now tied-up McMillans with a brown, slimy-looking substance in a syringe, and they began to scream. The McMillans continued to scream in what I now realized was fear and pain as their skin and hair began to fall off in chunks. Underneath, there was new skin, though. As the skin around their lips and mouth fell off, I saw that underneath was a giant, 
toothy grin, just like the others. I watched until the skin was all off and the Sutton family untied the McMillans. I started to quietly back away, but then I stepped on a floorboard wrong, and it made a loud creak. All the whatever they were in the house looked up and saw me. I started to run, and I could hear them chasing me. Luckily for me, I'd always been good at cardio, so I managed to get in my car and drive away. I thought I was clear, until I looked behind me in the mirror. There, a couple of cars behind me, was the Sutton family car. I continued driving and eventually lost them. I'm currently staying in a cheap motel somewhere in the next state. I think I'm safe for now, but I don't want to stay too long and risk them finding me. Please, if your neighbors or family start acting or sounding weird and creepy, get away as soon as you can, especially if they won't stop. Smile.